I just busted a dog to hate you, hate that. Yes, that wasn't even my, that wasn't even my full strength. Oh my god. This Gatsby is gonna like destroy everything that we know until it breaks. The Gatsby is gonna get me deported. Can you see that? <laughs> can't get deported anymore. <laughs> oh, it's still on the hinge, no problem. We got one hinge. <laughs> 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 Uh oh. Shit. Someone. One of our neighbors banged on the door. They banged on the wall. What's the problem? I can't make a little noise in my own office. Oh, the door just opened. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to the H3 podcast. We're gonna need a new door. Um. Today's episode is sponsored by yours truly, OJ Simpson, and uh, Hello, not OJ Simpson. Hello Fresh and Ring is uh, sponsored by. Big Not, we have no affiliation with OJ. Big Simpsons. difference. Just to be clear, we are affiliated with HelloFresh and Ring. <laughs> um, today, I come to you with the news that Ela has undergone her oath ceremony, and you turned in your green card, and it's official. Yeah. You are a full-blown U.S. citizen now. That's you cannot crazy. be deported. I just got here from the ceremony. Right. And... Um, it was so weird to give them my green card. I feel like it's part of my identity. Yeah, sure. The green card. It's like you always got to have it on you. And now it's like it's not on me. And <laughs> So you have the strange. certificate, but I'm not, I'm I'm curious. They gave me a certificate and I guess now I can apply for a passport. That's what you need is the passport, right? Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. That's really exciting. Thank you. Um we've also I have footage of that actually. You look here um I have footage so, of you ascending the stairs. <laughs> so I had no idea what to expect, and there were so many people. I saw, I, to be I saw. exact, there were 3,700 people. <laughs> Just in my ceremony, I think they do it 3, a few times. 3,700? Yeah. I thought it was going to be like 20 people. I didn't mute my phone. I mean, it's <laughs> wow, look at us. I thought we knew what we were doing, but... I got Sponsored by Ring. On the door, I got my phone blowing up. That was a Ring notification, by the way. Dude, yeah. Um, that's what it sounds like. Ring.com <laughs> yeah. sponsor this episode. Ring.com slash H3. Um, so I thought it would be like 20 people. Maybe 20 people. And I thought I'm going to go on a stage. The mayor comes and shakes your hand. Yes. And I thought that I was going to read the oath and we were going to record <sighs> it. It's not at all. You're like one of literally 3,700. People and then they they read the oath on the stage and then everyone repeats it. Well, I guess we are in like the second most populated city in America. Mm -hmm. Let me double check that, but mm, yeah, Los Angeles is number two behind New York. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised that you had so many people there. But god damn. Yeah. So it looks like they do it a few times a day too. I don't know. What a few times a day? Maybe not. Maybe it's not every day. I don't know how frequently they do it, but it looked like it was set up for more than one. Holy ceremony. smoke. So tell me about tell me about it. You were in there with four thousand people. What it what happened? What happened? Lots of waiting and waiting. And then um they had a few music videos. Oh really? Yeah. It was pretty funny. Like <laughs> Like why? Why were they America music? with like music, thank God for the USA. Oh and um, the founding fathers and mm. all that stuff. And then we had a video from Trump congratulating us. What did he say? He said, uh, I don't remember, like, you know, congratulating us and then it was, that it's very special. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't throw in some, like, <laughs> congratulations on becoming a U.S. citizen. Half of you, I wish, would... Uh... <laughs> I know. I have not passed the exam. I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but uh, what did you feel like a, like an honor? Because I saw you guys, someone sang the uh, the Star Spangled Banner. You made the oath. Did it feel mm -hmm. like, like, I mean, you know, did it God bless pretty, you? It uh, felt pretty nice and pretty, there was an emotional part. The judge, 
there's like it's like a, they make it a court mm. basically, even though it's just a it's not. I think back in the day, they, they're like, yeah, we'll have one dude in one court. <laughs> right. So they're it like, needs uh, to be a court. So there's a judge there. Wow. And she said that it's very, um, like, like emotional for her because she was once in our wow. shoes. Wow. So that was kind of cool. That is cool. She got theory. Really? Yeah. But she, sh- she told her story of she came here with her parents. What, and did she tell that uh, twice a day, that story? So I don't know. And she tears <laughs> up twice a day? I wonder that, too. I wonder if that was just a special thing for her. Maybe. But the room was probably electric because a lot of the, it's a big deal to, to a lot of the people in that room. I mean, everybody yeah. in that room was probably yeah. a big deal. And they kept saying, this is your day. Mm. And everyone was like, yeah. I saw that they were all going crazy <laughs> with their American flags. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's America really is cool. so great. It's cool because you got to become an Israeli citizen. Yeah. And like, what was that for you? It's nothing. <laughs> there's no, there's no, nothing. <laughs> yeah, basically, there's there's nothing to it. <laughs> it's true. America, they make it they make it a special thing because it yeah. is special. I I love America. I've been learning about America a lot through your. I mean, stuff that I already knew that I learned as yeah. a young child, but stuff that you can't really appreciate as a young child. But yeah. as an adult, when you learn about the founding fathers and and what they went through and why. And thank you. <laughs> and why they established this beautiful America. It is the really 13 cool. states, they came together to, with the ideals that freedom, that men can govern themselves. Mm-hmm. That freedom is an inalienable right bestowed on, upon us by our, the one true creator that no man could ever take away. These are ideas that had never been ingrained in a government before. Democracy was born here in America and put into action, action the American experience. It's just incredible. <laughs> Did you know that George Washington owned like 300 slaves and upon his death he freed them all because he came to learn that uh, slavery was a was it what it did not work with their idea of what freedom meant. He mm-hmm. came to understand that through the influence of people like Alexander Hamilton throughout mm-hmm. his whole life was against slavery. These men they fought and died. Did you rehearse this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I just get excited. I love. Yeah. I love democracy and I love America. Yeah. I, we the people. We the people. I know that now. <laughs> and um, oh, they had someone sing the national anthem. I heard that from the video. Okay, that was pretty cool. It was beautiful. And um, I finally s- understood the lyrics. Like you know, I always hear it and mm. I have no idea what they're saying. Because it's kind of hard to understand. Did they give you so like, they the gave lyrics? Us, yeah. Oh, they gave us the lyrics. Say, can and you see? I like my, that it says that it's the home of the free and the brave. That's right. Home Pretty of the cool. free, land of the brave. Yeah. It's true. The men who fought, you know, when the Revolutionary War went down, everybody thought America had no fucking chance. Br- Great Britain, the kingdom, the mm-hmm. greatest empire that ever existed to that point, the world power. It was a world superpower. They, uh, America was supposed to get their face stomped in. Mm-hmm. But these, they are brave and they are free. Motherfuckers did it. <laughs> they beat the English, dude. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just God. watched the Alexander Hamilton, so this is why... George Washington is such a badass. I love that mm-hmm. guy. And the fourth, George Washington, they say he's the best one. Of the, he, a lot of people say he's the best president of all time. He set that precedent. People wanted him to be king. But he said, no, I will only serve two terms. I will set this important precedent because we are a democracy. We are not a monarchy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, all this stuff that we're just used to. The American. Cool. Ex- yeah, exactly. We need to. We need to. Rem- anyway, thank you for becoming a citizen. I'm so proud of you. And I'm glad that nobody could kick you out of the country now for our hijinks <laughs> so if you kill somebody you cannot be deported wow you can lose your right to vote but you cannot be deported you can still be on twitter hey twitter <laughs> words. yes you can still tweet <laughs> nobody uh yeah that's the founding fathers say it. um <laughs> freedom is an inalienable right and as well as tweeting you should uh, have the freedom to bear twitter handle <laughs> tweeting is an un alienable right so here let's watch this video of you ascending the escalator so this is up there i got a flag <laughs> 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 
It reminds God. me of that video of oh Trump coming God. down the escalator. Remember that? Yeah. I got This is like a giftable moment. When it, when they gave me the flag, <laughs> that's when I was like, oh shit, this is real. When they hand you the flag on the way out. When you walk in, actually. Oh motherfucker. Yeah. Damn. I was never issued a flag. <laughs> I feel gypped a little bit. And your mom was sitting at the back. They separate you from the applicants and the guests. Mm. And your mom was with Theodore, and there were so many people. And I gave her my phone because mm. we wanted her to record if there's any good footage. And I wasn't sure if her phone was good. So I was sitting with no phone. It was like maybe f four or three hours. And... Uh, Lots of waiting with no phone. It's a really horrible feeling. And That's then, an unalienable right. <laughs> the, I, I couldn't see them. There were so many people. I had no idea where they were. And then I kept hearing like babies crying. I was like, oh shit, what is going <laughs> on? I hope the theater is fine. Well, just to give you guys an idea. Shot the hell out of the yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't see Look anything. Look at the well, hold on. So Look how many fucking people On are. the left, that's all the applicants. <laughs> all of this. <laughs> And on the right is all the guests. Um, where was it? Was it in a big stadium? Look at this shit. Yeah, remember where um, E3 was? E3, oh. The convention? Wait, where was I think that, Dan? It's what? That, right? Yeah, convention, convention center. center. Oh, yeah. It yep. was a convention it's center. It's there. Oh, my goodness. So the government's shelling out some major dollars to rent, to rent the space, man. Yeah. Holy shit. They could, you know, they could just give you a certificate and say, okay, totally. but they, they go that extra mile. They do. And that's feel special. Because let's face it. Our forebears fought hard and long during the Revolutionary War when they said, you won't stand a chance. When the 13 original states, the half of them didn't even want to fight. Because they didn't think <laughs> that we stood a chance to get the English. But there was a special few <laughs> who stood up and said, no. We will not stand <laughs> against tyranny about with taxation, without representation. <laughs> we will not stand without religious freedom, oh freedom gosh. of the speech, freedom of the press. We have these unalienable rights. We have the pursuit of happiness, mm -hmm. life, liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> these are the American ideals that we, we put a flag in the sand and we said, this is America. Wow. And we wow. fought. And we died. And we starved. <laughs> oh we ate our horses. We were famished. Ate horses? Yes, we ate our horses because we had a lack of supplies. Mm. That harrowing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and God damn it, we when that white flag <laughs> waved, we looked to God and we said, Freedom is my God given birthright mm -hmm. that no man could ever take. And I bow my head in reverence on July 4th, and I thank God and Jesus and George Washington, first of his name, Mount Vernon, that stands forever. So, I have a dumb question. Who's, <laughs> now that I know all the figures, who's on the mountain? The Oh, the uh, Mount Rushmore? Yeah. So, let's see. We've got, uh, who we got? We got George Washington. Here, let me pull it up. Father of our country. He is the father of our country. George Washington, such a fucking badass. You know, people always try to scrutinize him because a, a lot of people go back in history and they try to be like, rewrite and try to figure out, oh, this guy was... Sick. George Washington is one of the only people in American history that stands up to scrutiny. Mm -hmm. He He's described by those who knew him as a godlike figure. He was... He was uh, principled... He was fair. He was balanced. They said of him, first to war, first to freedom. Mm. George Washington, or first to war, first to peace, is what mm. they said of him. Um, you know what I'm saying, dude? This guy is such a badass. He owned a bunch of slaves. His, he was born into a, a family that owned slaves. He inherited his slaves from his family. So, he, you know, when you're, when you're raised that way, it's difficult. And it was such a divisive issue at the time. But near the end of his life, he came to understand that... Uh, it was at odds mm -hmm. with the ideals of freedom. So you have George Washington here. Wait for it. Uh, <laughs> are, are you unsure of the other one? I had a list, but I kind of <laughs> lost track of it. 
<laughs> Jefferson. Come on, hold on. Je- uh, uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson. Yes. Jefferson to big. So one. was he the like? He was the third guy. president. Thomas what? Jefferson was the third president, right? He was the, he was uh, the yes. political rival of Alexander Hamilton. Yes. Who, he was from the South. Uh, Hamilton was in charge of big government. He's the one that established the Federal Reserve. Hamilton was was opposed to all the or Jefferson was opposed to all those things, but he was a great American, obviously. Teddy Roosevelt, the one and only. One and only. And uh, of course, Abraham Lincoln. Nice. So a testament to our great, to our great leaders, who came before us. Very cool. Yeah. That's pretty sick that they just like fucking. Yeah. Apparently, it's supposed to be more epic, but they like ran out of funds and stopped working. I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Time to finish. They're it. like, fuck this. <laughs> Chiseling at a stone, man. Who's got time for this shit? <laughs> um, yeah, it's time to finish it. I think Trump should be up there. <laughs> Trump would do that, right? He would like commission himself <gasps> to be added. Dude, it honestly looks incredible, though. Here's like a. It does. I kind of want to go there. Look at that. That looks so good. Chopped into the mountainside. That's sick. Dude, Teddy Roosevelt was one of the most badass human beings ever. Teddy Roosevelt was like, used to ride into war, dude, with the Rough Riders and fucking kill Indians, bro. He would, he killed so many Indians. I don't know if that's <laughs> true. I don't know if that's true. I think it probably is, though. What? But he's, he's the one. <laughs> to be fair, all these guys probably killed fuckloads of Indians. Um, uh, yes, that is true. <laughs> that is 100% true. Um, but he's the one that, that established national parks. Mm-hmm. He was like, he was all about nature and preserving the beautiful nature of our country. Teddy Roosevelt. George Washington. Oh, such a legend. God bless his soul. Anyway, uh, congratulations, Ela. Thank you. We're all very proud of you. Uh, we've got, by the way, the main thrust of this episode is that we have got an investigative journalist on the ground at Area 51 <laughs> on September 21st, the day of the event. Uh, 20th, no? 20th, whatever it was. He was there on the day of the event, ground zero, interviewing people, talking to people. We've got that here today in H3 Podcast exclusive. Mm-hmm. So that's what's coming up a little bit later. Uh, we had our Teddy Fresh Rip and Dip event in New York City. That's where we were last Friday. It was um, a blast. It was a hit was so much fun i thank everyone who came out i mean the turnout was amazing i was whenever i do these meetups i'm all at the back of my mind i'm like oh, nobody's gonna show up you know, know. what i mean so five people here yeah the morning of we were both kind of like scared that no one's gonna show up or something but you know you i don't know man you guys are just you just never know what to expect yeah i don't know but you guys are, uh, you know, we're not making, like, YouTube video, like, main mm-hmm. channel videos, so I don't know if people fucking, whatever. But they came out, you guys came out, and it was wholesome, it was beautiful. We had armed guards there, they didn't even have to draw. <laughs> the security was amazing. <laughs> they were f- armed, just so any of you guys know that you were <laughs> trying some shit. But they didn't even have to draw <laughs> their weapons. Um... No, it was fantastic. Here's some of the footage. I haven't seen this, actually. I haven't seen this. Everyone was telling us the line was crazy, but, I mean, we, we couldn't really know. But we were there for five hours from Ooh. 11 till 4. I don't know what time this was uh-huh. taken, but... This is awesome. This was so... Like, dude, look... I see all the Teddy <laughs> Fresh pieces in the crowd. Man, you guys are awesome, dude. There was all kinds of people <laughs> onto the street looking into the window. I was like, I think they probably expect someone more famous. <laughs> They're like, who's in there? All these tourists, you know? Because we're in, like, the <laughs> fashion district of Manhattan. And uh, I love that piece. And, but, man, everyone was <laughs> so nice. I was just so happy yeah. to meet them. It was so sweet. And it was so cool. It's nice to just, people are like, you know, I, I listen to your podcast. Lots of comments on the podcast. Yeah. Lots of nice words for you guys back there, by the way. Yeah. Ian and Dan and lots of happy birthdays to Zach. Yep. I said, oh, yeah, this girl, we were just about <laughs> to leave, and this girl was, yeah, but what can you do? <laughs> we should do a, a podcast meetup sometime for you for you That's guys to, to meet everyone. This is at the end where we couldn't see everyone. Yeah. 
This music's sick, Dan. Did Give you them a hack through the window. Thanks, I wrote it myself. <laughs> oh, good. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, Rippandip.com, you can still grab the collection, although a lot of it's sold out, which is insane, too. But there's still, Whoa. there's the main pieces are still there, the hoodies and stuff. Dude, look oh at this. That's god. so sick. Thank you, guys. Oh my god. I'm uh, flattered beyond words. I'm humbled. I'm flattered. I'm thrilled, mm -hmm. and I'm especially, I'm glad that security didn't have to kill anyone. But I went up to the security, I was like, yo, you guys, just keep your eyes open, it's a crazy time. Keep your finger on the trigger. Oh, and as we took taxis to the meet and greet, one for us and one for my mom and my sister, who were also there. They came to watch Theodore, and we get out. And about to start the meet and greet, and then Ethan's like, "Oh shit, I don't have my bag." Yeah, everything. Ethan lost his phone, bag with wallet, phone. Everything. Yeah, well, one of everything. the one of the rip and dip people tracked him down somehow, and I got all my shit back. Yeah, but I ain't. But that I was, was amazing, out, dude. Yeah, I would've been so fucked without that. But I, anyway, I was to the security. I was like, "Keep your finger on the trigger, bro. <laughs> Be ready to draw at any moment." <laughs> so luckily, nobody died. But. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out, seriously, and uh, you don't know how close you were to being killed on that day, so. I was like, if anyone hugs me too long, draw. That's what I said to them. So, some of you guys who are really enthusiastic to meet me may have died on this day, so, but anyway, nobody died, and I'm just very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Right, Hila? I guess. Um, that crowd size is so cool, man. Anyway, yeah, ripandip.com if you want to grab some pieces. There's a lot sold out. It's it's doing incredibly well. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for all the support. And but ripandip.com, you buy this to, collection there. I, want, I do want to say a lot of times people ask, so this stuff we we don't restock. It's a one-time thing. So oh, yeah. Just so you know if you're wondering, that's how it goes. It's, uh, that's how we like to do it with a collab. Yeah, it, one it's done. Just, it's got to be rare. It's, it's a special, be special thing. Yeah. They are available at Zoomies, too. So. Yeah. Yep, exactly. But the plush doll, the slippers, oh, baby. <laughs> anyway, that's all the good things that have been going on in our life. And I also, before we get into all the, the meat and potatoes, I want to give a happy engage or happy wedding to uh, yours truly, Dunky oh, no and way. Leia. Um, look oh at the beautiful God, couple. I didn't see this. Married. I mean, hello. Whoa. Love these two. Such sweethearts. These two are so sweet. Yeah. So congratulations That's awesome. to them. I love both of them. We should send them a gift. Yeah, I totally missed that. I just actually did it. Am. Just happen? Yeah. Okay. They look great. <laughs> Jason cleans. Uh, first of all, she looks beautiful. Yeah. Her gown is beautiful. Um, but she's a pretty girl. It doesn't surprise me. Jason cleans up. <laughs> like one time I saw him, he like cut his hair and he looked real nice. <laughs> the second time he did the podcast, he cleans up good, man. He looks good, dude. That's really nice. I'm so happy. You know so what I'm happy. saying? Love these guys. God bless them all. God bless everybody. Just don't hug me too long or I will pull a weapon on you. Right, Eva? No. Okay. Let's see. I did the Gatsby entry. I, I hit <laughs> knocked the door off the hinges. We talked about all this. <laughs> oh, Casey Neistat is joining us on Friday. There's a question thread on the subreddit mm -hmm. for that. Casey Neistat, ladies and gentlemen. That's cool. Um... Uh, we've got all kinds of shit. I was really organized, but now my dog <laughs> is a fucking mess because it's not your fault, Dan, because you just did what I told you to do. But he put a bunch of links at the top, and it, uh. I thought I could handle it, but I can't, and it's just throwing me off completely. So, uh, I've got all, I've got like a cringe trifecta here for us today. It's a trinity of cringe. I've got a pregnancy cringe. I've got a cringe pants. And I've got a cringe interview. It's a trifecta. They're all special, wonderful, beautiful cringe snowflakes of their own kind. Interesting. And creating. Um, let's start with the cringe pregnancy. This one was making its rounds on Twitter. Quite popular, if I'm being honest with you guys. It's got almost 9 million views on Twitter. My first reaction when I saw this was like, man, this, these guys got to be YouTubers or something. This shit is so corny. But in actuality, I think it was a TikTok. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know what the hell, <laughs> man. I mean, there there are level, pits of yeah, hell. Yeah, the, the vertical kind of tells me that it was not YouTube. Right. There's pits of hell lower than YouTube. 
like Dante's, uh, you know, <laughs> Dante's levels of hell. <laughs> so I thought YouTube was the lowest level, but apparently not. Now, first of all, ABC News. I mean, what what the fuck are you doing? Why? What? Who? Who are you? <laughs> they go. You are my best friend, soulmate, and just in a few pushes, you'll be the most amazing mother our daughter could ever ask for. Husband That's kind of, of the an year. annoying statement. Just a few pushes. She's not even in labor, by the way. I mean, it, she is, but she's not like on the. She's not in the delivery room. But that's almost like rude. It's more than just a few pushes. Like, right. shut up. Right. Just a few pushes. That's all that is. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Just a few tears. Your whole body's gonna tear. Also, just maybe, a month of recovery. Maybe, maybe she won't be a, the best mother in a couple pushes. Maybe it takes time. Maybe being a parent has <laughs> yeah. a little more to it than a couple pushes, dude. <laughs> well, anyway, why is ABC tweeting this? They say, husband of the year surprises pregnant wife with book of motivational message to encourage her during two-day labor. Now, oh, guys, God. think about this. <laughs> the The notepad is uh. oriented towards the camera. My, uh, Michael from Shmo Yoho uh, pointed this out. Really. So here you could read it, right? This is the orientation. Eh. You cannot, she can't even read what's on the paper. Can you read that, Hila? That's her view. I mean, to be fair, the text is really big. Okay, but, uh, dude. It's not facing me. But not it, even close. Well, it's... we got to watch because I don't understand the angle yet. All right, husband of the year. I got competition here, Hila. <laughs> ABC News ain't fucking any, goddamn, maybe tweet any videos about my ass being the husband of the year. I can already tell you the motivational messages is the last thing I would want to hear. That's what I keep seeing a lot of women saying, like, if my husband tried this shit during the... But anyway, this is all bullshit. They planned this ahead of time for views. It's... Look at the shot with her stuff. Like, dude, homie, set up oh, the shot. Okay, She's I see what you it. mean. Yeah, it's not even facing it's her. It's not facing her. Like, I thought she could even camera. read it. Maybe if she squinted, she could read it. Um... If it's for her, why isn't it facing her? Yeah. Because they wanted to put her stomach in the shot to sell it. Right. This is probably not even his first take, if I'm being honest. True. Okay. Now, I have a lot of questions. You guys will notice that there's two songs playing at the same time. <laughs> why the <laughs> fuck? This bothers me that nobody points it out. There's two songs <laughs> playing at the same time, and they're not even in harmony. There's like a soft piano riff and a dude strumming a guitar, and they're different fucking songs. <laughs> Bro, why? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Breathe, Breathe, baby, like we've been practicing. Did you notice your document's not facing her, you idiot? I've been your biggest fan. Look how she's rubbing her belly, too. Like, I know. I've laughed at the same joke 10,000 times. Like. I don't know which melody to jam to. What's with the like? When do you call a bear with no teeth? What do you sorry, mm. What? A gummy bear. Bro, seriously, move the fuck on. Um. Uh. Also, are, is she is she deaf? Breathe. Why is he not talking? He's she. You know what I'm like. Why is no one talking? This is so annoying. The music. Uh, how is nobody pointing out that there's two songs playing in conflict at the same time? Uh, that the. <laughs> I'm just blown away by that. <laughs> and anyway, um, I get the feeling he's he's blasting through it too, right? Like he's trying to time it. Like he knows yeah. he has a time limitation on Instagram or something. Breathe, baby. You don't get to tell me to breathe. Only the nurse. By the way, you breathe. You breathe when you have a contraction. Like what? Are you Only the nurse can tell you to breathe. In breathe, my opinion. Baby. Breathe. Push. No, don't push. It's like you're not doing anything, so you have to not say anything. Oh yeah, there's this moment. She goes, uh, "Wait, there's a great moment here." When he goes, he basically is like, "Oh yeah, this is my favorite." Watch this. He goes, "People ask us." This is the best line ever, dude. So romantic. He goes, When people ask how we made it this far, what the fuck are you talking about? You look like you're 22. 
we made it this far. Well, I don't know them. Maybe they're like known somewhere. I you tell them. I mean? Okay. I tell them a lot of prayer and a lot of patience. He's basically saying, I cannot stand you. How do we make it this far? A lot of prayer and a lot of patience for your dumb fucking gummy bear joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's not flattering. You're not, you're not a hundred years old. You haven't been together for like 80 years. Yeah. A lot of prayer. If How you, are you guys still together? If somebody asks Just you guys. Praying to God. Right? That's not a compliment. <laughs> somebody goes, how, how did you guys, you guys are, you know. How you guys been together so long? A lot of prayer and a lot of patience. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> That's something you would hear from like your parents after 50 years yeah. of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> With like a hint that they hate each other. Yeah. A lot of patience. A rough, a few rough times. Already? This is your first pregnancy. She gets me. Okay. Breathe, baby. Oh my god. So patronizing. Every time I see that breathe, I'm like... The night before our wedding day, we received some advice we'll never forget. It said... Don't forget to prayer. We are going to be tested, but... There is no test we can't face together. That's the advice, bro. That's like in the vows. After two years of being married, that's it? Prayer and patience <laughs> after two years, dog? Dude, you're plenty of plenty tests. Plenty of there. tests. Bro, it's two years! What's a test? A, a test means like shit, shit hit the fan. Like yeah. they're having an awful like, what's a argument. Oh, a pregnancy loss? Oh, no. He fucking oh. got us good, man. He made us look like idiots. <laughs> Damn, they've been through shit, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Plenty of prayer and plenty of patience, man. He like, you uh, fucking <laughs> asshole. He, had, he gone and did it to you, man. I started by saying I don't know anything about them. Bro, and he then gone I and got, done it. He had to do it to him. I got sucked in, too. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll give you that. But I still do not condone two songs at once. That shit is fucked up. <laughs> breathe. Don't baby. tell breathe. me to breathe. Breathe. It's like, yeah, obviously I'm breathing. I'm not trying to die. Anyway, yeah, I'm over the shit. But like, bro, you're facing the camera. You're not facing her. Hello? Right? Yeah. I mean, do you want to try this one more time? Do you need my... So you... Can you read this? Have so you're not doing it right. You got to point it there to the camera. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that. Can you read yeah. that? No, I mean... With that size Not font, good. probably, but... But it's like this. I'm going, okay, breathe, baby. Breathe. You're the most... And it says, like, you're the most breathtaking. Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> some were, some of them were kind of long, too. He's looking at the camera, too, by the way. He's not even looking at her. He's facing the camera, so he's doing like this, Hila. Honestly, I would be pissed, because if you were trying to make, like, a... Video? A video out of it. Yeah. Well, she's in on it, obviously. All right. Thick as Steve. She's in there rubbing her belly and shit. <laughs> Whatever. I just don't know why ABC, ABC News got to get involved. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's two songs playing at once. What the fuck? <laughs> just being slightly sick yeah, in my mouth. Exactly. Thanks, totally. ABC News. I feel hate in my heart for this man. <laughs> if my husband did this while I was in labor, I would have punched him in the face. Exactly. That's my feeling. My feeling is just like ready to punch. I'm sure this is an acceptable grounds for divorce. <laughs> and I think that's when I knew the marriage was over. <laughs> she was definitely in on it, you guys. She set up the camera and everything. How the fuck ABC News is going to tweet that <laughs> and then tweet about Nancy Pelosi announcing <laughs> an impeachment hearing? Like, come on, you can't have it both ways, dude. Husband of the year. All right, so that's cringe. That's one uh, aspect. We're at a uh, break time. Let's take a break. We got two Let's more aspects of the cringe. Let's take a break to breathe, you ten. Breathe. <laughs> the, the, trin uh, the cringe trinity. And then we've got Area 51 on the ground reporting, you guys. This is, uh, this is a big deal. Okay? We'll be right back. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. 
Get easy. Seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you got to do is cook and enjoy. And if you guys go to HelloFresh.com slash H3Podcast80, you're going to get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. That's a freaking massive discount. Now, let me tell you about HelloFresh. It's simple. You get step-by-step recipes with pre-measured ingredients. All you have to do is follow the instructions that they put on the sheet, and you're going to have a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. And you get to say goodbye to endless grocery store trips, take out food, forget about it. You're going to get a nice home-cooked meal right freaking there. Easy as pie. You get all the joys of cooking without all the schlep. You know what I'm saying? Delicious. Break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh's 20-plus seasonal chef-curated recipes each dang week. You got flexible. You can add an extra meal to your weekly orders as, like, some bomb-ass garlic bread or cookie dough. You can change your delivery days, food preference, skip a week, whatever you want. Look, for example, here, look at this week. Look at this shit. Crispy Parmesan chicken? Juicy Lucy burgers? Are you freaking kidding me? Poor carnitas tacos? I mean, tell me when to stop. I'm not stopping. Salsa Verde enchiladas? That's got five stars, dude. It's in the Hall of Fame, apparently. Truffle Umami Blast Burger. Come on. And they're going to send you everything with instructions, pre-package. Uh, dude, you can even my mom couldn't fuck this up. And my mom's, she, was, she burns water. Literally. Uh, I've, I've cooked with HelloFresh. I think it's a lot of fun. Me and Ela love doing it. You get all the food. It's exciting. You see what's in the box. You cook it up. It's, del- it's always good. You, yeah, that's it. That's it. The only thing they're missing is, like, having a slave come and clean your dishes. Then that, that would be a complete package. But, hey, there's probably something they're working on for next quarter. Um, once again, guys, $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash H3Podcast80 and enter the code H3Podcast80. Ridiculous, ridiculous value. HelloFresh.com slash H3Podcast80 and enter H3Podcast80. For eight dollars off your first month of HelloFresh. Kavish. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. You already know about Ring doorbells and cameras that protect millions of people everywhere. You could take it from me. I've been on the mountaintop shouting about Ring. They help you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world. So if there's a package delivered or a surprise visitor, you're going to get an alert. You're going to be able to see, see, hear, and speak to them all from your phone. you got HD two-way audio features on the Ring device. You've got the spotlights. You've got the doorbell. You've got so many options. Let me tell you about my spotlight. Not only do I get a motion activate, it's got these super bright LED lights that'll blast the hell out of anything coming down. You get to see them pop up, you can talk to them, even through the spotlight, and you can blast them with an alarm. Be like, hey dude, I can see your dumbass. I'm telling you, this shit is insane. They've got this, they've got this, uh, neighbor app. And all these people in your neighborhood, they're all connected, they're reporting incidents, they're, uh, everyone's talking to each other, I'm t- this is this is ridiculous. I love the Ring product. If you are at all concerned about your um, safety uh, in your neighborhood, or you just want to have better tabs of what's going on around your house, the Ring is is uh, there's no better product. I mean, I it's really even even if you're not afraid, you get to see like raccoons and coyotes wandering around in the middle of the night. It's fantastic. I saw a drunk guy. A stumble off my fence into my backyard and walk all the way around my house at like 3 a.m. I'm like, dude, that's uh, that's some wildlife right there. You know what I'm saying? I would have never even knew that happened without Ring. Guys, we got a special offer for our Ring starter kits available right now with a video, Ring video doorbell, motion-activated floodlight cam, and the starter kit has everything you need to build a Ring of security around your home. Here's what you need to do. Go to Ring. Dot com slash h3. That's ring.com slash h3. I'm just telling you. Start with the doorbell. You're going to be addicted. It's freaking insane. You can keep tags on all these pucks and, fr- and friends and family. Um, but you're, nothing's going to slip by you. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I've got uh, our on the field reporter, a.k.a. my brother, Sean. <laughs> Who drove on the down to uh, Area 51 to be on the field and get the get the scoop? 
Um, as you guys know, it's been uh, in the news lately. Area 51, they wanted to raid Area 51. Someone made a Facebook group that went viral. Everyone started RSVPing yes for a meme. There ended up being like millions of people. And um, on on the uh, the lead up to that, this was a great little scoop. Dutch YouTubers who were on vacation <laughs> were arrested and jailed when they tried to get near Area 51. Leave it to YouTubers <laughs> to fuck everything up. I mean, really, they are the bottom tier of... They are the Dante's Inferno, the lowest <laughs> level of hell, as being a YouTuber. Two Dutch friends said they wanted a good look at the mysterious Area 51 before leaving the U.S. They ended up in a Nevada jail. Uh... They were arrested about three miles deep into the Nevada National Security Site, the site near Area 51, which had been focused on conspiratorial theories for decades. Uh, the two men say they never planned to participate in the raid. They just wanted to do it, the two of them. We didn't have any intention to storm it because we leave on the day before the actual storming date. We just wanted to go there. Good logic. When arrested on September 10th, both men told deputies they could read, write, and speak English and had seen the no trespassing signs at the entrance of the site. But they said they wanted to take a look at the facility. Police said, isn't there signs in Area 51 that said, like, you will be shot on site if you enter? Like, they're very... Uh, Probably. They don't fuck around there, dude. Uh, caution signs around Area 51. You know what I'm saying? Look at this shit. Yeah. Hey, you're not supposed to... Hey, Sean, what the hell? <laughs> Sean's on hold, by the way, but uh, we're getting to that. Restricted area. No trespassing beyond this point. You will be... Uh, isn't there one that says that they'll murder people? See, so help me out here, Dan. Uh, Six months imprisonment, it said. Yeah, that's pretty... I uh, think the, the murder part is just implied. <laughs> I remember seeing something that was like, you will be shot on site. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that, this was outside Area 51. That's suspicious. <laughs> oh, well, that gives it away. Warning, Area 51 with the UFO <laughs> scooping up a guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the funniest part about this story that I'm leading to is that, so they pleaded guilty to trespassing and illegal parking. They were sentenced to one year. But it was, suspend well, it was suspended, and the two will spend a total of three days in county, uh -huh. and each pay two thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. Hmm. Officials said they wanted to make an example out of them. That Area Fifty One is not a tourist attraction. They were. This is my favorite part here. Um, when arrested, uh, he had. They had on them cameras, phone, laptop, and a drone. <laughs> Can you imagine thinking you could just fly a drone area over <laughs> Area 51 like these two yeah. bozos YouTubers? God, it doesn't get any dumber than that. <laughs> I'm glad they caught him. Well, imagine if they That's did, funny. though. They're like, they just flew a drone over Area 51, made a YouTube video about it. Oof. But they didn't. Well, anyway, we've got my brother here, the, Sean, the great Sean Klein. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, right now, Sean, my brother of, uh, of 34 years, Sean is two and a half years older than me. Is that correct, Sean? <laughs> two years, nine months, yeah. Two years, nine months older, to be exact. <laughs> um, Sean is a high school, uh, high school, right? Teacher. Yeah, high school physics. High school physics teacher in Nevada. He is beloved by the yeah. student body. He's a very good teacher. Uh, correct me if, I've, if I'm embellishing, <laughs> but I don't think I am. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take credit for all that. <laughs> now, a lot of your students know you as my brother, right? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. <laughs> is, it, is it the likeness? They think that they, they, you look like me, and then they notice that you have the same last name as me? Yeah, I get this a lot where, like, I'll just, like, be teaching and, and, like, a student will come up to me and be like, hey, Mr. Klein, do you, like, do you know this, like, YouTuber guy <laughs> named, like, H3H3? And I'm like, why? They're like, you got, like, the same last name as him. <laughs> you sound just like him. You look kind of like him. I'm like, yeah, that's my brother. And then they go, oh, my God, no way! <laughs> do you enjoy that or is it annoying? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like whatever. Like it happens a lot. So it's just kind of, you know, it's just, it's just a thing. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Do you get it? Do you find that uh, yeah. you get extra respect from the students uh, when they find out you're my brother? Yeah, it like it adds like a coolness factor. <laughs> nice. Like, oh, well, his brother's like, yeah. But then I'll get like this like, yo, Mr. Klein, like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> your brother seems like way different than you. <laughs> well, that's, that's right. that, that. I mean, that's true. We do have very different you guys personalities. Are very different. That's 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 like explain. I'm like, yeah, I'm a teacher. He's a YouTuber. So. <laughs> well, well, you understand. Uh, we're two different people. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. Although we are more, we are very different, more than most siblings, maybe. But maybe but not. Also, at the same normal. time. But yeah. people did always think we were twins growing up. So. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were pretty close in age, and you were a little bit taller for your age and I was a little bit shorter a lot bit shorter so well, not a lot don't get be dramatic don't be too hard <laughs> on yourself I mean I uh, was pretty small but it's all good well you've grown up into a a, a bright young man my brother's jacked by the way I'm fat and he's he's pretty <laughs> jacked my brother so if you see him, don't fuck around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Message to all of the students out there. Don't cross. Have you ever has has there ever been a fight in one of your classes, like a physical fight? Um, I've almost had a fight. <laughs> Later last year, I had this incident where um, this girl went to the bathroom, and then another. I let see. So we have like these pass these bathroom passes. And so you can let two out at the same time. So I let one girl out, and she went to the bathroom, and she was, you know, taking her sweet time. Another girl goes into the bathroom, and she hears, overhears her talking about another girl in my class, and she's, like, talking shit about her. And so she comes back and tells the girl, yeah, yeah. And then they were like, she came back, and they're like, what? You disrespected me? And they start, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sounds a little bit ratchet. Use them. <laughs> de- de- escalation skills there. Would you, descri- would you describe but, the confrontation no, as no. ratchet? <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me that term. One of my students used that, and I had to ask what that meant. <laughs> That's it's funny. just a little ghetto, I guess, right? That would be the definition. A little street. Dirty. Um, it was, um, you know, it was, it was, it was unique. I'm going to choose not to use any derogatory terms <laughs> to explain that in case those students are listening. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Smart. Keep, stay professional now. Um, they're, they're great. They're a great girl. Do you have any, I mean, there's a dip, there's a dip uh, you know, you hear the trope about the hot female teacher. Do you ever get any females coming on to you as the, uh, as the handsome, I'm just curious. I, mean, I just heard that. He's a young what man. You he's, doing? you know, he's single. He's got muscles. I'm not saying does he fuck his students. I mean, of course he doesn't. I'm just curious. So what's the experience like as a high school teacher? As I'm sure it's a, there's a lot of ins and a lot of outs, Dan. Now, Sean, answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think most, most of the students are, are pretty respectful. Um, I know, like, in my younger years, because I'm, like, 36, now almost 37, mm-hmm. but uh, when I was a bit younger, had a bit less gray hair, I definitely, like, had girls that, like, it was pretty clear there was, like, a crush, and I'd have to be like, hey, yeah, you are not staying after school. You know, oh, just, no. Kind of thing. Yeah. I, I yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's very smart, very wise. Has yeah, there no, ever it, been? It, it, it's a little easier now. Why? Because nobody, there's less interest in you because you're older. Yeah, because mm. I'm older now. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that way. Uh, has there ever been any sex scandals at your school with like teachers and students? Um, I think there was. <laughs> That's so crazy. That happens like yeah, every school I now. Like, like I, I've, so I've, I mean, I've only, I've only, this is only my second year at this school. Mm. Um. I think there was some case of something like a few years back, but I, I I can't I can't recall. But I mean, it's like I don't know in 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 Vegas, it's like it's yeah, this things definitely happen. But uh, yeah, no, I don't I don't know of any specific cases. 
I feel like all the teachers when I was growing up were like old and no one yeah no one would even think to right yeah and well, that that's, that's how it was when I was in school yeah like all they were all like in their 50s and 60s yeah. and it was like oh gross <laughs> and then I went back after right after I finished college and I was doing substitute teaching at my former school and like all those old teachers had like retired or died and they were all replaced by like Mm. You know, twenty something fresh blood. Like, oh, yeah, uh, I can see. Yeah, so I, I think in Vegas, I think those incidents happen more than in other districts <laughs> because the um, there's such high turnover of teachers in in Clark County, and so there's a very large percentage of teachers that are in their twenties and thirties versus most districts. It's probably a smaller percentage. Mm-hmm. Imagine fucking a high schooler. As a teacher, ooh, awful. No, that sounds. No, I'm kidding. That sounds awful. Jesus Christ. That, well, Sean, yeah, no, I'm glad no, that you no, have. I'm gonna uh, do a no comment on that one. Yeah, do no <laughs> comment on that one. So this is my brother Sean. A little introduction to the man, the myth, the legend himself. Now, Sean, I did an incredible reporting. He went out to Area 51 on the day. You did all the research. You did. You got everything set up. We've got all a bunch of footage we're going to watch here uh, shortly. But I want to. I wanna, can you clarify for me, Sean? First of all, there was the original Facebook page. Um, but mm-hmm. but there was three different events that happened. There was the Area Fifty One base yeah. camp, the alien stock, and then there was one in Las Vegas that was hosted by the original Facebook page owner. Can you please explain what yeah. the hell's going on with those three events and how do they how are they related? So it's just this like twenty one year old college student guy, and he just thought it would be funny to post this on this fake event on Facebook as like a meme, and uh, it really started to take off. I heard that the there's that uh, little Nas video. Did you ever see that? Uh, uh. What about him? The, no, they so they took like the what the Old Town Road. That's the name. Of the song, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so there's that there's that he he did like redid it as like a cartoon as like a meme of like the Area 51 invasion after he he saw this Facebook event and then like really blew up. I oh, Lil Nas was um, uh, associated. Yeah, so, I mean not correct. Uh, so but yeah. So anyway, it it became really popular. Ended up with like two million people. And, uh, like, originally he thought it was going to be a joke, but then he was like, oh, you know what? Like, maybe I can take advantage of it and, like, we can all, like, get together and party. Because he didn't want people to actually storm Area 51 because he was like, that would be stupid. <laughs> so um, he coordinated with the owner of the Little Alien Hotel or Inn or whatever. And, um, and Rachel. And so they were in the process of trying to organize something. And he said that he got kind of freaked out because they didn't have a lot of the proper permits, and he thought there'd be too many people, and there'd be all kinds of issues, and then he might end up liable. So he just, like, cut ties with her. And then he got contacted by Budweiser. They're like, hey, we'll sponsor your event. So he went and sponsored an alien stock event in Las Vegas. But then the lady that owned the inn, she was like, well, I got all this free publicity, so I'm going to still host it. And so she still hosted and called the alien stock, but put like a hyphen in it. Yeah. So you have um, competing and festivals. Then, correct. And then another company was like, hey, all these people are going to be coming up from Vegas. Let's, let's make our own event that'll be like more organized and stuff. And we'll have actual like speakers uh, from alien documentaries and books and try and get some of that that crowd and that's that's the one i went to so you went to so the one that you ended up going to was the area 51 base camp and this was the one for the actual these are the people that were ready to raid area 51 <laughs> i i don't i don't know about that um <laughs> but they were they were the, the alien enthusiasts reports, i read it yeah yeah there were, no, there were definitely like I feel like if there were going to be an alien enthusiast, they would be at this one because this is where they had, like, the alien experts, and it seems like, yeah. Now, mm-hmm. what I'm wondering is why on earth would Budweiser think that a dude who only qualification was making a Facebook page could put on a festival? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, but, I don't know, but I, 
I, on the local news, they covered it, and it looked like there were like you know like twenty, thirty people. <laughs> That's it. And it was plus it was a Thursday night too. So Wait, was, like, there was only twenty just, or like, thirty people at the Budweiser <laughs> sponsored fucking. I'm. I'm. Sh- yeah, I'm sure Whoa. like throughout the night there were more people, but yeah, it wasn't very many. And what about alien stock? They said alien stock. Overall, I think there were like two to three hundred people that showed up. <laughs> Dude. And then so, okay, so let's go to Area uh, 51 Base Camp, which is where you were. Now, first, let me ask you how many people yeah. were at that one. So the total number of people when I was there was probably somewhere around 100, <laughs> 150. That's crazy. That's <laughs> nobody. Yeah, well, and what makes it worse is the vast majority of them were just staff, paid staff. Oh, no. <laughs> so who, f- okay. Yeah, so like that's, they, so it's they, even they, half. They, they thought there'd be, yeah, they thought there'd be thousands of people. Oh so the God. owner, the guy that organized it, hired all the security. There were like, there were like 20, 30 police officers that he was paying to be there. <laughs> and then he had like additional security. Wow. And there were all these like food booths and everything. There were like 50 porta potties. Oh my God. I had to <laughs> urinate at one point. I went and used one cleanest porta potty ever. Oh wow. My God. <laughs> wow. That's so, so funny. Who, who's yeah. the bozo that bankrolled that? Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know who the guy is. Like I saw um, when I was there, um, someone from one of the news channels was interviewing him and he was really pissed. He was like, yeah, I know. I have to pay all these people. (laughs) Everyone Um, was covering it like it's a real thing, you know, the whole time. The Facebook group. Yeah, and the news. Uh, On the the news. news. It was everywhere. Oh, oh, no, absolutely. Like, when I was there, there there were literally more people from, like, there were more media people than there were actual (laughs) event attendees. Dude, that's awesome. That's so Well, it's a bit of a schlep. Like, if you don't live in Vegas, I mean... Even from Vegas, it's like a two-hour drive. But if you're anywhere else, like fuck, go, driving there, right? Yeah, it's, and you. But you know what? I thought it was gonna be like, like this really horrible, like ugly desert. Like I imagine, like, like I thought of uh, Independence Day of Bruce Willis. Remember? He's like, welcome here. And like, I do remember. Like, yes. all flat, like all flat. Yeah. So that's what I imagine, and it's actually not like that at all. The area where it was is like really pretty. There's like a river, really? and there were like trees and a lake and stuff. Yeah, I was like, "What?" Hmm, that is surprising. Um, yeah, but Area 51 is a little bit further east than there. Like that, they, like that. This site is at like the entrance, but the total like area that includes Area 51 is like massive. Well. Let's let's I present to you now. Sean Klein yeah. presents an Area Fifty One documentary. Stands aside, Shane Dawson. <laughs> We've got the Area Fifty One documentary on deck, <laughs> and I'm very proud and excited to present it to you guys here. So, uh, let's let's enjoy it together, shall we? Here we go. Area Fifty One. Hello, this is Sean Klein reporting from Heiko, Nevada, here for the Area Fifty One um, base camp. We are Alien Research Center. Big alien dude inside Alien Research Station, which is more like an alien gift shop. It's a bunch of alien merch. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Look at this, it's so empty. (laughs) There's like all these buses. There's buses. Bro, there's like five people there. Oh my god, how much money did they spend on this? I don't believe there's aliens in there. You do, you do. Uh, Yeah, I. I don't have any uh, ruling on the aliens. They say Kevlar came off of materials found on the Roswell crash. Why Kevlar? It's like not that crazy of a material. <laughs> in 1947, in early 1947, the most high-tech uh, computer used vacuum tubes. Yeah. By the end of 1947, they had discovered or developed or found... Step the fuck aside, Shane Dawson. <laughs> Spacecraft, I interviewed an SR-71 pilot that chased one, and he was traveling 2,000 miles an hour, mm-hmm. and it left him in the dust. Well, we've actually learned that it's just a glare, right? Dude, the lighting in this shot is insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just a glare. <laughs> Bro, this shot is so insane. <laughs> yeah. If that's the case, some of them have had a 14 billion year head start on technology. Yeah. We're the only ones to 
quote Jody Foster's character in contact. <laughs> if we're the only ones, what a waste of space. A man has <laughs> a love that quote. power unless there's an undercurrent of frustration, knowledge, interest, or curiosity. Are you following me? No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Memes are digital weapons. <laughs> no, no. When you heard memes are digital weapons, did you know that that was uh, a standout line of the evening? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, memes nice. are digital weapons. <laughs> and there's like, there's literally like ten people in the shot right now. Yeah, this is a crazy stage, right? I mean, this looks yeah, this official. Is, this is better than the one they had at Fire Festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually better put together yeah. than Fire Festival. Yeah. And they had like 10,000 people. <laughs> Yo, come on. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Dude, gotta... It's just a talent show. <laughs> Do not, do not take my sarcasm for lack of belief of fucking idiots, bro. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm here for the music because I know the music is good. But what I'm also here for is the justification. We're all gonna get abducted. Yeah. Hopefully, if we all get abducted. I'm gonna get abducted tonight. All get abducted. I'm going <laughs> home tonight. I'm going home. Dude, we're gonna see if traffic is going home. I'm going home tonight. No, you're sticking out the flat tire. You're an alien. No, it has a flat tire. I will have no Me Too movement <laughs> between E.T.'s <laughs> daughter. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Uh, people that ran the gate. Uh, we only saw the one individual that was there, and she was ranting about some environmental issues, and she briefly talked about Jews. You made an interesting <laughs> character. Uh, the Jews are always involved. <laughs> always the, I love that. That's so fun. Uh, definitely, oh, definitely met a guy that uh, was telling me sort of about uh, how the government knows that the UFOs are really a de demonic technology, and they know it's the demons. They don't want to admit it to us. What we need to now, really... hey, Sean, was this the guy he was talking about? Yeah, yeah, I went and found him. Yeah, I was like, I can't leave if I find this guy. Oh, that's this. This guy is gold. Okay. I love hearing from this guy. Um, oh yeah. Do you know if this guy had an abduction ad abduction experience? You know, I should have asked him that. Yeah. My guess is that he probably he, he probably did. does think he was abducted because he says because I mean, he was saying like most people get abducted. So I'm assuming. I, yeah, I don't know why I didn't ask that. He says, because I noticed he says during this interview that 5% of the population has an abduction experience. <laughs> I was like, whoa, sounds like you've got a... <laughs> sounds like an alien put a probe up your ass or something, dude. But anyway, yeah, this, right? this guy, uh, this is the real deal. So here we go. Is, is that the government's been sleeping in the de in the in bed with the devil? Uh, basically, it's a Faustian bargain that allowed us to get this exotic technology, so that we could have these fancy UFOs flying around. But it comes at a cost, and that cost came with human subjects that were abducted. Through a non it was basically an agreement between uh, the military-industrial complex and non-human entities, what I like to call demonic aliens. Okay. Literally, anywhere from three to five percent of the population has had an abduction experience. Experience. Literally. Where, where did they Literally. come from? Are they from <laughs> space or are they demons? No, these are interdimensional Who made the entities. recent? Okay. They don't Literally. come from a planet <laughs> out in deep space. They don't come from another galaxy or, you know, star system. Bro, I think you're the point of this connection. And they're demonic. Interesting. Okay. I love... I that question. I wonder why. The UFO phenomenon doesn't begin with the Nazis. It goes... It begins, begins before that. Is it connected to you? Nazis? It does, because <laughs> the... There's Written a by lady Steven Spielberg. Called, her name is Maria Orsic, okay. and she was an occult, who, uh, an occult medium who channeled from demonic spirits hmm. to acquire this forbidden technology. German engineers were then able to take that information and eventually create a prototype of the UFO. The first oh. working prototype happened in 1934. Okay. By the time the <laughs> early 40s rolled around, they had a fully functional fleet of UFOs. Fascinating. These demonic. Fascinating. Was it was it hard for you not to? Uh, to, to, was it hard for you to go with the flow and not interrupt him with facts and logic? You know what? I thought it would be, but like what he was saying was 
so out there. I mm-hmm. was just like so fascinated. I'm just like, I'm going to let this guy talk. <laughs> yeah, that's the right yeah. call. And I'm glad. And you did a great job of uh, of getting it out there. Yeah, we we start. Yeah, when he starts talking about like interdimensional beings, I'm like, oh, oh I'm right. pretty sure Alex Jones oh. believes that. And that's somehow they're about. connected to the Nazis? Yeah, every, like that's why I said directed by Steven Spielberg, because the villains <laughs> are always Nazis in his <laughs> movies, no matter what. They <laughs> seek to overthrow, they seek to kill, steal, and destroy human beings. They seek to decimate the human population. By the way, they really suck at killing humans, because like the population keeps going up a lot. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Where, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from South Dakota. South Dakota. South Dakota. Okay. <laughs> Texas, but you know I moved back to South Dakota for a promise of a better life. You know. Man, he's the first person that ever moved to South Dakota for the promise of a better life. But God bless. Him. Uh, South Dakota. Yeah, this guy's a legend, man. Which I definitely did find out there in South Dakota, but <laughs> it could be the next civil war. Obviously, there ain't that many motherfuckers showed up. <laughs> like 50 if it people was, there. it could have been. <laughs> yeah. No one showed been. up. <laughs> could have been. So, war, so you baby. say you came here mostly. I don't know who they're fighting against, but it could have been so party. party, okay. I never came here to rave or raid or whatever the fuck they were doing. Like, yeah. I come here to party. <laughs> that show right there fucking inspired me to. Inspired. Yeah. I watched that show. <laughs> And fucking, they're telling you about fucking chairs that are fucking this tall. Sean, can like, you help me shit. here? I didn't follow the chair, the chairs thing. Yeah, what is he talking about? He goes on and he says that there's chairs that are really small chairs is proof <laughs> that there's aliens. Could you supplement that with a little? Yeah, yeah. So I guess he was saying that he saw some evidence that it, that they have like these. <laughs> These chairs you heard of in Area 51, <laughs> and they're very small. And so, since they're small, like they're way too small for an adult humans, so it must be for aliens. So they have pictures of little chairs at Area 51, do they? I not that I'm aware of. I don't know. This guy didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I'm pretty sure he was on lots of drugs. <laughs> Well, there's one thing I do know for sure that he did find the promise for a better life in South Dakota. <laughs> so happy for him about that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's just not fucking normal. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. So describe to two, describe to me how a motherfucking chair this big is fitting anybody besides an alien, and I'll fucking scream to the goddamn gods. But I think it's fucking bullshit. I think guarantee fucking aliens are here. <laughs> Who the fuck's to tell me? I can't. I have to go to fucking work in the morning. <laughs> like, yeah, now he's it's really It's an insane on fucking thing. And I say now that he's for talking a, not the a truth. motherfucker <laughs> like. I have a decent amount of cash, so I don't have to fucking sit around like a goddamn bum. I was wondering, I was like, how much money do you think this guy's in the bank account? <laughs> 500 bucks? <laughs> I don't know, he said decent. <laughs> yeah, which is funny to think about. But I can tell you, only the fucking most brainwashed people would be sitting around fucking watching themselves to fucking... I don't even know the word. You know the word. <laughs> What's it called when you fucking sit deteriorate? Oh, deteriorate, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch all these folks deteriorate. <laughs> 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 Where the fuck else would they be? <laughs> In the fucking sky. In sky. <laughs> I have to say, it looks like everyone there is having fun. That you guy is I mean? a fucking legend. Yeah, yeah that legend. guy was <laughs> so <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, what I can I say? This. It's hard-hitting reporting. Yeah, I would have watched a full hour of this. I would have, dude, I would have totally watched a full hour <laughs> of that. Now, Sean, <laughs> how did the cut come out? Was there anything uh, uh, fantastic that we neglected to include in the final edit yeah i don't i don't think so i mean that kind of really captured the the experience of uh, a lot of a lot of unique characters um well not really that many unique characters but a handful of unique characters and, uh, <laughs> fairly fairly empty uh, um event space. well did you I... get to see a ufo oh 
The big question. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I was taught which someone, someone was saying, one of the guys I was talking to, I think after I stopped playing, he, he was telling me that like on the way here, he saw you up. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. I saw, I saw, um, uh, a, a drone. Okay. That's Wouldn't pretty close awesome to a UFO. If the, if the Air Force actually like <laughs> flew over some crazy shit just to fuck with everyone there. <laughs> Um, well, Sean, yeah. I would like to congratulate you on a successful mission out to the Area 51 yeah. base camp. You came back unharmed. Thank you. you came back with uh, some golden footage. You did a great job, and I look forward to sending you on more journeys yeah. of discovery. Would you like to do more reports for us? <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, I think you're good at it. I think you've got yeah. an act for this. Were you ever uh, All right. were you ever in fear for your safety out there? Not they really. Seem very it's kind of interesting because, like, I was telling yeah. people that I was heading out there, and everyone's like, as I post like an Instagram photo, like heading to Area Fifty One, <laughs> and people are like, "Oh my God, be careful, <laughs> be safe. Let me know when you get back." And I'm like, "Why do people like so afraid? There's nobody <laughs> there." But the pe- I mean, like, they- these UFO pe- alien people, they're like. They're like totally harmless. Yeah, they seem all. Very it's all chill. like it's crazy. The coverage of this story was just so insane that everyone was thinking like, "Oh, there's gonna be people ready to fight, and then the government is gonna fight them." Yeah, and the, there's and gonna the, be like a yeah, civil no, war it, going it, on. <laughs> and uh, it, it's the it's the media again, like taking a story that seems interesting and then completely blowing out of proportion. Yeah. And the the government or yeah. the the air force was making statements like "Don't yeah. approach." So it was all good. But it, it, we ended up with a yeah. fantastic piece of journalism mm-hmm. here that Love I it. think that uh, oh, thank you. will go down in the annals, the annals of history. Annals. The annals of history. So, Sean, we wish you all the best. Um, and uh, we appreciate your, your time and effort. So thank you, Sean Klein, for joining us. Thank we, you. We, God bless. We, we wish you well. God bless. Papa pop bless. Papa bless. God <laughs> yeah. bless. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. And talk that, to you later. Uh, what was that? Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Yes. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> and there you have it. Don't ever say that we here at the H3 Podcast do not hit hard. Okay? We take this job seriously. Anyone who says we don't do our research... Were you Just at have, Area 51 base camp? Distance. <laughs> Seriously. And that's it. This is just the beginning of what we did our research here. once in Area 51. We were there. Boots <laughs> on the ground, mother. Fricker. <laughs> that's just the beginning of what we're capable of. We are not stopping. <laughs> we're not quitting. This show is only getting bigger, badder, and crazier than ever. Now let's talk about Justin... Uh, Justin Trey. <laughs> now we should decide what you want to talk about because our time Black is limited. Face. I'm today. gonna talk about blackface. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Trudeau. 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 Uh, this story is just hilarious. I mean, we're almost done, but Justin Trudeau can't stop wearing blackface. It's like the funniest shit ever. <laughs> now, uh, this is so funny. Look at that's like mega blackface. Ooh. That's like no hold what? bars blackface, dude. Like oh, what is shit. the costume? Mu- uh, looks like just some. It looks Aladdin, really, I think he said. Yeah, it looks really dark in that one. I think ironically, that's the brown face photo though, because it was two <laughs> blackface, one brown face. That yeah, this guy. So. I mean, that's a lot of blackface. You know what? Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's striking the, image. The picture can be <laughs> deceiving though. A black and white picture. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, okay, but regardless, I mean, he has, definitely has blackface on. <laughs> he has some, some sort of face. face <laughs> yes. He has some face on. But it's sure. funny because everyone was like calling for his resignation. I was like, bro, come on. Yeah. He's the prime minister. He's not going to resign because he did blackface like eleven years ago as part of a costume. It's just so stupid. It's like you're telling me that the person he is, the person he's become. The Prime Minister of Canada, all he that's culminated in his mm-hmm. life, all of his life's work and everything, you want him to resign? He's defined by this one moment 11 years ago that you just found yeah. undoes everything he's worked so hard to become is because he wore blackface 11 years ago? F- listen to yourself. Fuck you. <laughs> Let me go through the annals of your life and find <laughs> something that's embarrassing and try to get you fired. And yeah. It's like, it's like get, you, you really ask... And by the way, Justin Trudeau is like... A super liberal. He's like a mega lib, 
liberal like leader and they want him to resign because he did blackface 11 years you know who's gonna replace him fucking true yeah I some mean, some ultra gonna, nationalists yeah if you're gonna go against him well, pro- yeah, who else are you gonna get yeah exactly you know who's gonna who's gonna replace him he's gonna run in blackface <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah that's what you're gonna get fucking idiots i'm so glad he didn't like give into that shit he's like look i apologize it was a stupid thing to do. I mean, that's some fucking beautiful <laughs> blackface, dude. Look at that shit, boy. Damn. His hand is even black, dude. That's crazy dedication, bro. Bro, that's crazy. His hand is black. But what? Yeah, it's Yo, not like a... it's not like he's doing this today. Exactly. Have you seen him in blackface recently? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You you wanna define him as a man? Everything he's achieved in life, because he did, like, one thing he did 11 years ago. Bro, look how he's holding her neck, though, too. It's kind of wild, huh? Mm-hmm. In the, damn, buddy, look at that shit. Uh, he apologized. I should have known better. Okay, fair enough. We could all look back and say that thing. Uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid. How old am I now? 34. It was probably actually, like, 20 years ago, but there was trick-or-treaters who came up in fucking blackface. What can you and, do? And Times were like, different. Yeah, and nobody said anything. It was just like, that kid's crazy. But not like, nobody thought, oh, that kid's racist. Right. He was just so fucking crazy to paint your face black and go as a black person on Halloween. Yeah. But no, but like, nobody cared. Nobody was causing a fuss about it. I'm just saying. Not that big of a deal. Here, I'm truly shocked. I don't know who this person is. Elizabeth May. I'm truly shocked by the racism shown in the photograph of Justin Trudeau. He must apologize for the harm done and commit to learning and appreciating the requirement to model social justice leadership. Okay, that's fine. He didn't, she didn't call for his resignation. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can be shocked and he can make an apology and we can, and we can you know, use it Fair as lady. a learning experience. That's fine. I, I support all that. But this is his website. That's oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> The it's, greatest thing, though, about this story, too, is that he, it, it kept, like, coming out as, like, a one after the other thing. Like, there was one story, and he was like, I'm sorry, and then another one came out, and he was like, okay, seriously, I'm really sorry, and then a third one came out. Well, okay. It just he made doing, it seem a lot worse, because it's getting dragged out like that. If he's doing blackface back then, he thought it was okay, so right. then, yeah, he's a serial blackface. He's a serial blackface He's a serial defender. costume lover, he, he, too, is he, what he defended himself. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll look, let's look into that. <laughs> By the way, this doesn't look like blackface. Get it's black. hard There's to tell. There's some other photos of it a, that look a little bit more. It's a low-quality black-and-white picture. Here, right. we've, got, we've got the photos here. we got the uh, receipts, as the kids are calling it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Now that's blackface! <laughs> that's him? <laughs> Apparently. What's the context what? on this one, do you know? <laughs> Uh, it was like a, it was like a camp or something. Yeah, uh, he's, that's awful. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's very bad. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> um, he responds after the second one came out. The fact of the matter is that I've always, and you know this, been more enthusiastic <laughs> about costumes than is sometimes appropriate. But these are the situations. Did we that know that? Regret deeply, <laughs> and you know this. <laughs> So I said, I said, okay, well, uh, let's see, let's <laughs> let's look into the costume because I remember he was getting kind of goofed on for this whole thing where he would put on like the Indian outfit. People were goofing on him. So I do. So re- is this racist too? I don't think so. I, I I think he was just he was in India and he put on the outfit. Yeah. If that's racist, then what the fuck is? I don't understand anything anymore. I thought I thought that's a nice gesture when you try to. Right. I don't think anybody was calling this okay. one. Okay. They were just though. goofing okay. on him, I no. think. No. Okay. And it was just because he That's made the defense I mean. about loving costumes. Okay. Like all these pictures of <laughs> By the way, costumes start him? coming out. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? Hitler? No, I guess not. He's like, he's like two subtle shaves away from being. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a Canadian military uniform. Before. Uh, yeah, he's done it all. I mean, he, he's not lying. Dude loves costumes. God damn, Justin. I think that go. is, I think that is legit, le, those are legit Ooh. receipts. Okay, now this, now this is troubling. <laughs> okay, now this is career ending. 
What, what is that? A giant pimple on his fucking? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's part of the. It's part of the anyway, costume. yeah. I mean, costume? you're you're right. The guy is a serial costume uh, dresser. They're all like high quality costumes. He's and, eggs, a, and, and he's a theater geek. <laughs> and if I pull up this Aladdin blackface, you can tell, like, bro, he got the turban, he got yeah. the, uh, everything going on here. I mean, this guy is all in. He painted his hand black for yeah. fuck's sake. When you paint your hand black, that goes beyond blackface. I think that means he didn't paint it. Someone did for him. There was other people involved. It's one of, one of those legit costumes. We need to find out who they are and ruin their fucking life, too. <laughs> um, what I did, he said, <laughs> what I did hurt them. Hurt people who shouldn't have to face intolerance and discrimination because of their identity. This is something I deeply, deeply regret. Darkening your face, regardless of context, of the circumstance, is always unacceptable because of the racist history of blackface. I should have understood that then, and I should have never done it. God bless. It's funny, after it, it, it keep coming out all these more blackface photos, and he was like, uh, they're like, have you done this more than once? And he's like, honestly, I'm, I've probably done it several times. <laughs> I can't really remember. <laughs> Nice. It seems harmless, though. Anyone, yeah. who, anyone who wants a man to resign as prime minister, the prime of his life, oh, this man's life has culminated. He's achieved so much at such a young age. To resign in disgrace because he did blackface 11 years ago. Give me a fucking break, dude. So was he, was he born like his dad was a minister, too? Yeah, a his, prime minister? yeah, yeah. I think... Now, um, that's it. I mean, I got a couple more things, but we can we can save them. Yeah. It's my dad's birthday, and mm-hmm. uh, ah. we got to go get grab some dinner with him. So I'll I'll, I'll put a a uh, uh, I'll put a fucking thing in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you say that? I'll put a a pin, a pin in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about? I'm gonna put a pin in it. He's gonna put something in it. I'm putting a pin in it. <laughs> in what? In it. <laughs> what so that we, we can talk about it later. Okay. Putting a pin in it. <laughs> I don't understand. Putting a pin this. in you, dude. <laughs> you know how I made it this far with you, Ela? A ton of prayer. faith and prayer, bro. And a Every pin. Every day a giant I pin. pray. <laughs> Every day. People ask that. That sounds so sad. <laughs> Lots of prayer to God. <laughs> I've been asking God every day, please give me the strength. That's like you're one step away from jumping out of the window. Lots of <laughs> prayer and patience, dude. <laughs> All right, so that's it then. How are we looking? How long? Uh, we looking good? We looking gold? We're looking goldy. So on Friday, we've got Casey Neistat, the uh the I'm going to show him that I'm using the Casey Neistat phone. <laughs> He's going to wow. love that. He is going to love that. Um... So, so you know, catch us on Friday. And then the next week after that, we got Bobby Lee and Kalila coming in. Ooh, the greats. Double after date. that, we've got, uh, don't we have more guests lined up? When is the Bachelor going to, Bachelor finale? We got it, and we, there's, we got a lot the to bachelor discuss after the episode with a three. Today. That's right. Oh, shit. Oh, next week, I think. We next week? We're talking about next Friday. Yeah, next Friday. But we okay. got we got some planning to do. Oh, so I'm excited. We because we're already Friday. getting inquiries for the next Friday. bachelor. <laughs> I think we have a uh, I think we have a a, ba- a bachelor for the next season. Mhm. Who you got? I don't want to give it away yet, but um, hmm. we will announce it on the last I'll, episode I'll of the bachelor. He's very eligible. He's very accomplished. He's gainfully get very gainfully employed. Yeah. And I'll say that um, dare I say that uh, he's got a touch of magic and divinity in him as well. Right. Divinity? Yep. Divinity. Wow. Is that a hint? Yep. Uh, yes, it is, Dan. Mm. But until then, I wish you, today's Tuesday, so have a great week. I'm going to see you on Friday, or not, well, tomorrow, you know, you see it on Wednesday, not Tuesday, because it's a day late. We had to start later because it was a ceremony. But I do want to say, as I close out this podcast, how meaningful it is that uh, you've come here um, and, and become a citizen. And the, under the, you've stood on the shoulders of the greats like t- Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, oh Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> and when the, and when the, you know, when the English came mm-hmm. on the shores, when they rolled into New York Harbor with thirty-two thousand troops, and the world uh, looked upon America like 
ants, fools, these ideals of freedoms, idealists, mm -hmm. uh, naive, they, would, they, they said. That those ideals of freedom stand now, over 200 years later, as a testament. People often say, what would uh, the Founding Fathers think of America today? Do you know what they would say? Mm -hmm. They would say, they would probably cry tears of joy that they're, that the, the country they, oh, come on, you can't boo America. Was that a boo? Yeah. That was a boo. What were you booing? You, what oh, the, saying that that's what they what? would say no. if they saw it today. No, Dan. But America is beautiful, they Dan. Would say, they okay. would say, the it worked. The Constitution it that we worked. wrote, the Bill of Rights, well, everything we dreamed of, it we worked. We people. 200 years ago, can you imagine that they dreamed that it would become the imminent superpower of the world? Coast to coast, Pacific to Atlantic, she to, sea to shining sea, Dan. We got a mobility scooter, Can you then. imagine the, dr uh, that's the, not the, the American promise dream. of freedom? <laughs> and <laughs> what is? to fruition. A boo, Dan? I mean, seriously. You can go on Google and buy a mobility scooter, and it's delivered to you the next week. Come God on. Bless. Uh, that, uh, God bless. And not from sea to shining sea, American from 13 original <laughs> states to 50. All right, we run out of songs. I mean, come on. Well, give me the American music then, for Christ. <laughs> I've been waiting for it for this whole time. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's fine. It doesn't matter that we uh, uh, genocided uh, millions of Indians. It doesn't matter. It did. We had a manifest destiny. God told us we must. Uh, we must own the land from sea to shining sea. That was manifest destiny. It was a national policy. I don't know what you're saying. On the western frontier. Yeah. Basically, they had this Christian-funded uh, uh, policy called manifest destiny. Said so that God destined us to have from coast to coast. And that, and it didn't matter what we had to do mm -hmm. because it was God's plan for America. It didn't mm -hmm. matter if we had to kill Indians. Oh. It didn't matter if we had to kill Mexicans, of which we killed many. Oh, we it was a, the American promise, sea to shining sea. That of course came much later than the founding fathers. They had nothing to do with that, so don't mm -hmm. bring them into that. <laughs> well, manifest we destiny. Got a well. A manifest destiny came late after uh, the founding fathers mm -hmm. had already. Uh, set the groundwork for the great country we live in today, mm. Dan. What are you, a historian? What are you, fucking... Give me a break here, okay? He did know all the constitutional questions yeah, well, to the test. Yeah, well, Dan booed me when I said... <laughs> when I started... <laughs> I mean, give me a break. What? No, I do think that we need to add an amendment to the Constitution about mobility scooters. What would it say? Mm. That every... Every person can buy one. Mm -hmm. I think that already is the case, but go ahead. <laughs> I gotta think about it, but I think it's gotta be there. That would be the 38th Amendment, right? 28th. 28th Amendment. All right, so, well, we, we gotta write our congressman. <laughs> we gotta write uh, Brad Sherman a letter. Know. <laughs> Brad Sherman. That would be the weirdest fucking note he ever got. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> That's the, beautiful, that's the beauty of our great republic. A republic for which it stands. Indivisible. I do need... I, I think mobility scooters should be a little cheaper. It was a little I don't know expensive. if that's amendment. <laughs> I don't know if that's amendment. <laughs> it thing. needs to be substituted by the government. Some sort of subsidy. Yeah. Some sort of... Uh, so it's a, it's not a it's not a privilege, it's a right. Yeah, it is a right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you, let's get you... Okay. Slow down. You've just been American for one day. <laughs> uh, take it easy. Slow down a little It's bit. almost a commitment to own one. <laughs> okay. But it, All right. Let's say that it's a right. Slow it down there. It's almost a responsibility as an American <laughs> citizen <laughs> to, own a to own a mobility scooter. All right. All right. At one point Slow in your life. Now. Take, pace yourself, okay? Got a whole life ahead of you of being an American. <laughs> okay? From sea to shining sea. Well, guys, it's been a fun-packed filled. We're going to go get some barbecue, dude. So what the fuck's up now, baby? Yes, I mashed potatoes and fucking steak. <laughs> Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese! <laughs> I'll maybe have some broccoli if it's sautéed in butter. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll spit in the... I will fucking shit on the table. I will literally shit on the Why table. Why don't you eat the spinach that's cooked in butter and cream? I hate that shit. It tastes like garbage. Why would you even? I don't me get spinach? that. Like, 
I hate uh, cream of spinach. It's awful. Who is it's it not made cream. For? It's just a heap of nasty, soggy spinach. It's not cream, and, and it's not spinach. And you're eating it like, oh, well, you want to eat spinach because it's healthy, but you know it's just coated in butter. It doesn't even taste good. I mean, who would eat that? I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Dan or Ian, do you like that shit? Ian would. Zach uh, would, but he's not here. He's not here. Um, yeah. Yes. That's you what do? you want me to say, right? You, no, I, I'm, I'm do not. Like I, don't want, I want you to tell me the truth. <laughs> the cream of spinach shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's nasty. No, okay. Ian? I gotta be real. I'm sorry, what was the question? All right. Do you, I, do you listen you to you the show me? that you How work are you at? not <laughs> listening? You're live switching the show. <laughs> Ian, are you not listening? I'm just watching your mouth move to know where <laughs> to switch to. You don't listen? Yeah, we just keep it on mute back here, to be honest. Ian, that's do you not true. Okay, so so which so do you enjoy it? Yes or no? Wait, I'd really he don't. doesn't I'm not know what we're talking about. I'm not going to tell you, dude. How, first of all, we're almost in the same room. Do you not hear us anyway? Like, but and also the door got busted down, the so door it's not is even open. closed. But I'm not going to tell you, Ian. I'm not going to tell you what we were talking about. We've been ranting about it for like five minutes now. Well, you got to take a gamble. Do you like it or not? The thing that you don't know. Yeah. Well, you did say I would like it, yes. right? I d heard that part. Uh, there you go. I'll take your... I trust you and say yes. You fucked up, dude. That was <laughs> so nasty, bro. You disgust me. Trap, bro. You disgust me. I can't believe that you would eat that shit. Shame on you. Let's end it now. Thank you, everybody. It was cream of spinach, Ian. Yeah. Cream of spinach, Ian. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs>